What's up guys, this episode we're going to be talking about using array.wrap from Active Support to clean up your code, remove conditionals, and make your code a little bit more reliable. So anytime you're building a method where you might have to pass in an array of, let's say we want a method here where we take an array of users and we convert them to their full names. So we say and map full names. We'll call the full name method on each one of those and we'll join it into a string with commas separating them. So this might be something in your helpers to display a thing of users um, in friendly names. So we could say full names user.all and that would go and work for all of those. But you know what we could not do with this is we couldn't say full names current user. This is not an array, it's not enumerable, whereas the relation from active record is. So when we get to this map call, the first one's going to work and call the full name on each one of those, but it's going to blow up because map is not a method on a um, user object. So it would blow up here because this is not an array being passed into the method. So how do we solve this? Well, luckily enough, uh, Ruby itself includes a cool method called array um, and you just pass in parentheses to the constant. So it's kind of like your initializer, but instead of calling dot new, you were just calling uh, array directly like you might in some other languages. And here you can pass in anything you want. So a few examples here, you might want to pass in an array. You might want to pass in an individual object or nil, or you might even want to pass in a hash. So if we do each one of those, you'll see the output here in the terminal, and it will have converted each one of those into an array of some sort. So the first one, we already passed in an array. It just gives us that array back. And the second one, we passed in the number one by itself, give us an array with that one in it. When we passed in nil, gives us an empty array. And when we pass in a hash, it kind of converts it into an array and then gives us, us an array of those back, which is a little strange and something that you probably don't normally need, but it is available if you do. Um, and this is very, very handy because it means for our code up above, rather than having to say if users dot is a uh, array or something like that, if it's enumerable, um, Otherwise, we want to say users.fullName. So if you give us a single item, we can put out that user's name. Otherwise, if you give us a lot of users, then we can convert them all and join them. So this is in a case where if we didn't have a method like this, um, we have to introduce a conditional to handle both cases. This is very, very common and something you wanna hopefully avoid if you can. Now, the way to solve this would be to simply say array, pass in users, and take the return value from that and operate with it. So this would solve that problem so that both of these would work. If you even called full names for nil, um, that would work as well because it would give you an empty array, whereas our conditional right here would not. So nil would be another case we would have to handle um, and say else if users dot present then do this else you know pass if it's nil something like that it just starts to get a little nasty because we are trying to deal with these various cases that might be passed in and we want to be good uh, developers and write stuff that will automatically figure out how to handle those different cases so that users who are calling this full names method don't really have to know that you have to pass in an array. They can use it a little bit more fluidly and pass in whatever objects they want to have the full name called on. So array will work pretty well for this um, and solve our problem, but we might want to handle those cases for the hashes a bit better and active support includes a method for that. So if we require active support slash all, which is already done for you in a Rails application, um, we can see that all of this is going to be the same for active support. They introduce a dot wrap method that we can use instead. 
And this will work slightly differently, but still pretty much the same. So let's try that out in the console. Um, and here we see that we get our first four items from the built-in Ruby method. And when we do this with array.wrap, it's the exact same except when you pass in a hash, it's converted into a single hash inside of your array. So this is two different options that you have. If you wanna treat your hashes differently, um, you can go ahead and do that. Normally, you probably don't need the array.wrap method unless you wanna handle this case, um, which works a little bit differently. So in either case, we can now define a method that handles all of that very simply. Let's make another example here where we're gonna sum some numbers. And we want to say numbers dot inject zero. We're gonna add them all together. Same thing applies to this. We would have to say if numbers is a array, we want to sum them together. Otherwise, if it's not, maybe we just return uh, zero, or maybe we have to say else if numbers um, dot present will return numbers, otherwise will return zero. So we could handle a bunch of different cases here where we might have one, two, three passed into sum. We might have the number one passed into sum and we might have nil passed into sum. So we'll print this out and show you kind of the old way of doing things six, one, and zero. But if we were to use either one of those array methods, we could say array numbers dot inject zero plus, and we can get rid of all of this and it should do the exact same thing. So now if we run this in the terminal, we should see six, one, and zero as our output. And our code is just going to run down one path, no conditionals, and be much more reliable and easier to test. We don't have to write multiple tests for this anymore because we don't have multiple branches. All of that is running down one code path, so we can write one test for this to make sure it works correctly, and we don't have those two branches to test for anymore. So our code's more reliable, it's simpler, and easier to manage, and you can apply this to anything where you might want to be working with arrays just to safeguard in case the user passed in a single item or nil or something like that. If you pass in nil, you get an empty array, so whenever you're doing loops on that array, it doesn't run it ever. So that works really reliably for anything like that and uh, just works like you would expect it to. So that is it for this episode. I hope you found this useful and can apply it to your code to go simplify your conditionals, just your code in general. Until the next episode, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.